Perhaps no modern game is more blunt about its influences than Eldest Souls. Despite having a name that would make a copyright lawyer sweat, this overtly From Software-inspired action game manages to establish its own blend of addictive, brutal combat, and gorgeous art direction that rivals its 2D and 3D peers. If a Souls-like focused almost exclusively on boss battles sounds great to you, look no further. In the beginning, there was dust. And from that dust, the moon was born. Borrowing heavily from Dark Souls, Eldest Souls introduces a world once ruled by gods, until humanity rebelled and imprisoned them all in a giant citadel. Gods are a vengeful type though, so now it's up to one final hero with an oversized sword to kill every remaining deity. It doesn't exactly hit the lore heights of Gwyn or Artorius of the Abyss, but it's an entirely serviceable way to set up what we're really here for, big beefy boss battles. Switching influences, Eldest Souls' excellent combat takes more from Bloodborne than Dark Souls. With your giant sword, you can use a basic swing, a dash, a charge attack, and a powerful blood burst. You're never more than a few hits from death, so Eldest Souls very much encourages an aggressive playstyle, with charged and blood burst attacks replenishing small fragments of health. What results is a nearly non-stop dance of dodging and exchanging blows. A skill tree lets you specialize your combat style, while equipable shards gained from defeated bosses give you extra abilities or buffs for further customization. Mercifully, you can completely respec your character any time between fights. I loved this freedom because it consistently surprised me with what combinations were viable. Going up against the ice-powered Hyam, I found myself suiting up with a defensive ability that spawned Swords of Light with each Bloodburst attack. Those swords later shattered upon a successful counter, briefly tripling damage and providing me a moment of solace in the chaos. While fighting the feral deer god, who attacks with lightning fast swipes and poisonous roots, I respect to give myself increased speed to keep up with his great strides across the arena. Infusing boss shards into one of several slots is often an interesting game of risk versus reward too like a special attack that deals extra damage, but also hurts you if you're over 50% health, but heals you if you're under. With such interesting tricks to try, it's a bit of a shame that Eldest Souls can be stingy with its skill points at first. The story is designed to be played through multiple times, with a new game plus and an arena mode for those who want it, but on a first playthrough, which took me about 15 hours overall, that focus on replayability means some of the early bosses were slightly less enthralling without a wide array of abilities at my disposal. That said, these fights are all impeccably balanced threading a fine line between frustrating and devilishly tantalizing. I died 519 times to Eldest Souls bosses. But even when it spurred me to yell obscenities across the living room, I immediately wanted to hop back in for another try. Despite having just 10 bosses, each fight is creative and unique. The gorgeous pixel art provides some fascinating animations, selling the corruption of a massive knight as tendrils spring from his arms, or a weary god of light standing up from his throne of electrical cables. Its art is equally important in battle, where learning a boss's movements can clue you in on when to strike and when to run. The isometric 2D angle can sometimes result in boss attacks being a little unclear. For example, the Guardian's hulking frame shambles beautifully, but he turns on a dime so quickly that I'd often unexpectedly eat a face full of spear in a way that doesn't happen with a 3D action game. Eldest Soul's fantastic art direction extends throughout the Citadel itself too. It's easily some of the best pixel art ever committed to a video game and the details in the background of every screen tell captivating little stories. Just don't go in expecting those stories to be the size of a novel. While undoubtedly beautiful, each area is also pretty small, and will really only take you a minute or so to get around. The emphasis is absolutely on the bosses here, but you're still given reasons to stop and smell the decaying roses now and then, including a small number of NPCs scattered about that provide some fun flavor. It doesn't reach anywhere near the world building that FromSoft is known for, but that is admittedly a high bar. 
Though it wears its overly obvious influences on its sleeve, Elvis Souls is an incredibly satisfying boss rush that still manages to set itself apart. Its brilliant combat is complemented by a smart skill system and some incredible pixel art. Designed with replayability in mind, it's a little bit of a bummer that its impressive customization doesn't really blossom until partway into your first playthrough. But one thing that's there from the start is that feeling of immense glory after every hard-earned victory. Ceremoniously slumping onto the living room floor, clutching the carpet for dear life with one hand, while exhaustedly flipping off the television with the other. For more moody action games, check out our reviews of Death's Door or The Ascent. And for everything else, keep it right here on IGN.